Hey everybody, it's Mr. N, and today we are going to cover the Pythagorean Theorem. So since this is a geometry class, you probably have already heard of the theorem, and you've probably already used the theorem. But let's talk about it again. So Pythagoras, who was a Greek mathematician and philosopher, and what's interesting is that back then, many of the mathematicians were philosophers. Well, he came up with this formula, but we have shown historically that there have been Babylonian tablets found from around 1900 to 1600 BC with knowledge of this theorem and knowing what this theorem does. So it's actually older than Pythagoras. We still credit him with solving it and finding it, but it had been around way before that. And Pythagoras was around uh, 570 to 500 BC. So um, it was in that time period where he found this out. And here's what he found out. His basic assumption, or what he found in his theorem, states the following. It says, the area of a square built upon the hypotenuse of a right triangle is equal to the sum of the areas of the squares upon the remaining sides. So we know it as a squared plus b squared equals c squared. Well, this means that he took squares. So I'm going to place my square on each side of here, not quite a square, but, well, as good as it can get. And let's do another square here. Again, not quite a square. Let's see if I can move it a little bit. And um, got it right there. Kind of make it more square looking. Let's see if we can mess around with this one, kind of make it more square looking. Okay, so the area of these two squares would be equal to the sum of the area of the hypotenuse one. So if I drew a square here now, and I don't think the software will let me do it at an angle, so I'm just going to draw it out like this, freehand it. So that square. Okay, so the area of these two squares, square one and square two, if I find those areas, it will equal the, these two sums will equal the sum of this third one. So that's the basics of the Pythagorean Theorem. So we end up with a squared, b squared, equaling c squared. And there we have it. That's what we use. That's what we apply. It's an extremely powerful formula, and it works on right triangles. So if we have a right triangle, we can say this. And the converse would be, if this situation holds true, then we have a right triangle. Now, this is such an important thing because we see it a lot in nature. Anytime we have something vertical and horizontal like that, that meet up, you're going to form that right angle, and then you can make a triangle out of it. And now we are going to be using the Pythagorean Theorem. And there have been so many proofs, so many different ways to prove that this works. In fact, uh, former President Garfield even has a proof of it as well. So a lot of people found this interesting and were able to set up proofs and show that it works all the time. Now, we've got something called a Pythagorean triple. That's any multiple. If you have a squared plus b squared equaling c squared, any multiple of that will work. So if I take 3, 4, and 5, if I say 3 squared plus 4 squared, so that'd be 9 plus 16, well, that will equal 5 squared, which is 25. Any multiple now of 3, 4, and 5. So if I multiply all these by 2, that'll be a right triangle. If I multiply these by 3, I'll get 9, 12, and 15. That will also form a right triangle. So 3x, 4x, and 5x. Another Pythagorean triple, 5, 12, and 13. So 5x, 12x, 13x. Any of these multiples will work. 8, 15, 17. So 8x, 15x, 17x, 7, 24, 25. So there are so many other Pythagorean triples. These are the most common. You'll see 3, 4, 5, 5, 12, 13, and these other ones as well. And you just need to know any of their triples will work. Okay, moving on. Now we've got the converse, which I told you. If this holds true, then you have a right triangle. So if a squared plus b squared, or you could say c squared equals a squared plus b squared holds true, then you have a right triangle. The Pythagorean theorem says is if you do have a right triangle, then this is what happens. And we have the next thing, which is called the Pythagorean inequalities theorem. So I can determine if something is obtuse or acute on a triangle. If my triangle is an obtuse triangle, you take the longest side 
the longest side squared would have to be greater than the sum of the other two sides squared. So if c squared is greater than a squared plus b squared, then it's obtuse. But if c squared ends up being less than a squared plus b squared, then it's acute. So we can use the Pythagorean theorem in an inequality to determine if we have an obtuse or an acute triangle. Let's take a look and we are going to do some examples. Here we have to use the Pythagorean theorem and we can use a calculator to find the value of x. I probably will also do these without a calculator and leave them in square root form for you guys. So let's practice doing it that way. So practice doing it in square root form. So on the first one here, we've got 10, 24, and x. So let's go ahead and use the Pythagorean theorem to solve for x. So 10 squared plus 24 squared will be my x squared. So 100 plus 576 will be x squared. So adding these up, I'll get 6, let's finish it here, 676 equals x squared. And taking the square root of 676, that's going to be x, so x will end up being 26. Okay, that's the square root of 676. All right, for the next problem, we've got x squared plus 30 squared equals 34 squared. So x squared plus, I'm going to square the 30, I'll get 900. I'm going to square the 34, and I will get 11. Oops, this should be equal to here. I will get 1156. Minus that 900 gives me 256, so x squared is 256. So taking the square root of 256, I will get an answer of x equals 16. Okay, one more here, and we'll move on to these word problems. So this is going to be x squared plus 8 squared equals 12 squared. So 8 squared is 64. So x squared plus 64 equals 12 squared, which is 144. So 12 squared minus the one, so the 144 minus the 64 will give me 80. So x equals 80. Now you can say x will be the square root of 80. And as a decimal, I'll give you both of these. As a decimal, this comes out to be 8.94. 8.94. And the other way of doing this problem is let's break down the square root of 80. So square root of 80 here is going to break down, and I'm looking for the largest perfect square. And that largest perfect square would be 16, because 16 goes into 85 times. So now I can take the square root of 16, and I'll be left, I'll have 4, and inside this radical, I will have the 5 remaining. Again, here's what I did. I had the square root of 80. I found the largest perfect square. That's 16 times 5. I took the square root of 16, the square root of 5. Square root of 16 is 4. Square root of 5 just stays as the square root of 5. All right, so that's how we do those. All right, so moving on to number four. Let's take a look, and we've got, it says a home builder is designing the braces for a roof. She wants the length of the brace to be six times its height. Refer to the figure and the height of each, and to find the height of each of the braces to the nearest inch. So here's the figure that we got. Let's slide this up a little bit. And since this is going to be, it says six times the height, so that's going to be 3x there. The whole thing will be 6x across. This is 152. So we are using the Pythagorean theorem to solve for x. So let's set this up. We've got 3x squared plus x squared equals 152 squared. So this gives me 9x squared plus x squared equals 23,104. Okay, then this will be 10x squared, divide by 10, so I'll get x squared equals, divide that by 10, you're going to get 2310.4, and now we're going to use our calculators to take the square root because it said to the nearest uh, inch, I believe, so that's 48.1 inches for x, so this is 48.1. And that's the height they're looking for in this problem, the height. Okay. It says on the next problem, fill in the blank to complete the definition. A set of three non-zero A, B, and C such that A, so this would be integers. Non-zero integers would give me a Pythagorean triple. 
All right, let's go up to here. Okay, so it says use a calculator to find the missing length um, to the nearest tenth. All right, so let's see. Over here, this will be 4. Point, let's change the pen color. 4.5 squared plus 5.6 squared equals, there's the C, C squared. So 4.5 squared plus, I'll save you guys the hassle, plus the 5.6 squared. That comes out to be 51.61. That's C squared. So take the square root of that answer, and you'll get 7.1, 7.2, because it says to the nearest tenth. So you get 7.2 as the answer there. And no, this is not a Pythagorean triple, because they're not integers. Okay, taking a look at the next one, you're going to say 8 squared plus call this your x, x squared plus your equals your 14 squared. So 14 squared minus the 8 squared. So this gives me x squared equaling 132. And they want it to the nearest tenth, so we'll keep these in that format. And this is, x is going to be 11.5. And again, this is not a Pythagorean triple because it is not in, it is not integers there. Over here, this is my x, so x squared plus 16 squared equals 20 squared. So then x squared will be 20 squared minus the 16 squared, and I will save you guys that hassle. That comes out to be 144, so x equals 12. And yes, this one actually will be a Pythagorean triple. In fact, if you divide all these sides by 4, this is a Pythagorean triple. And it's the one where if you divide it by 4, you get 3. Divide this by 4, you get 4 and 5. That is the Pythagorean triple that we end up with there. Okay, let's take a look at the next one. Three segments have lengths of 7, 9, and 11. Complete the exercise on your child so that it can form a triangle, or if the triangle acute, obtuse, or right. So can we first form a triangle? Well, the sum of any two sides has to be bigger than the third. So if I say 7 plus 9, it's got to be greater than 11. 9 plus 11 has to be greater than 7, and 7 plus 11 has to be greater than 9. And yes, it works for all three. So now, the, uh, we need to know the longest and the shortest segment. Name the length of the longest segment. Well, that's 11. Now, substitute the segments here. Okay, so we've got the two short ones, 7 squared plus 9 squared. So 7 squared plus 9 squared plus the 9 squared comes out to be 130. And then on this one, this is our 11 squared, and that comes out to be 121. So now I have to compare them. I compare C squared to A squared plus B squared. Since C squared is 121 and these two came out to be 130, C is less than it, so I'm going to have an acute triangle here. So, what kind of triangle on this next question did we form? It is acute, so you're always comparing C squared to the other two. If C is less than it, it's acute. If C is greater than it, then it would be obtuse, and that's pretty much it. Alright, so thanks for watching guys. Hit that like and subscribe button, and I'll see you guys in the next video.